Good morning, along with Elisa Murphy, our producer, our godly counsel, Dominican Father Dominic Legg. I'm Brian Patrick with Gloria Purvis. So for all those listening, if you have little ears with you, you may want to turn the channel and come back around 725 because this is a bit of a mature conversation. Um, on the phone, I have with me Saren Foster. She's the founder and president of Feminist for Life. Good morning, Saren. Good morning, Gloria and Brian and Father. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we're actually able to talk about National Sexual Assault Awareness Month. I know, I remember, um, you know, just reading about history that uh, back in England in the 70s they started marches called "Take Back the Night" because women were facing this kind of violence that they were walking alone at night and they wanted to bring attention to it. And fast forward now um, in the 2017, it's uh, National Sexual Assault Awareness Month. How did Feminists for Life get involved with? Um, you know, talking about sexual assault? When I came on board with Feminists for Life in 1994, we first started working on the Violence Against Women Act and our ability to help reach pro-life members of Congress in the House and Senate helped us uh, achieve almost universal support for that important bill and created a real sense of awareness that rape victims were real victims. And for and in the years um, following that, it helped us reach out to feminists who really needed to understand that children of rape and their mothers deserved our unconditional support. One of the things that I have found um, very sad um, in, in looking at feminists who aren't for life, like you all, you all are pro-life, is that they seem to treat abortion as if somehow it's a cure for rape. And we know that that's not mm. possible. What would be your... What do you say to these feminists that demand rape, uh, demand abortion as a sort of a justice uh, in term in response to rape? What do you say to these people? Well, it's a, a, a longer version of this answer is on our website, feministsforlife.org, under the news page. We have a lot of links. Mm -hmm. But when I present the feminist case against abortion on college campuses, it is the, one of the top two questions I receive from students. And I can tell you that nothing is more personally divisive. As Feminists for Life, we do not discriminate based on parentage mm. or any other excuse for discrimination. The circumstances of one's conception does not determine a person's worth. At one point at Berkeley, I asked everybody to line up in the order of their, uh, circum uh, their um, uh, conception and tell the neighbor why they were more valuable than anybody else. And nobody would get up on the stage and do that. Mm. Uh, they got it. They understood it. Uh, but Feminists for Life does not believe in exceptions for rape, as you noted. But we do believe that women who survive rape uh, learn that they were pregnant, like our speaker Joyce McCauley Benner, and others who choose life for their children are exceptional, and that every child should be uh, cherished. So we don't believe that you should terminate a person because of what their biological father did. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in giving unborn children the death penalty. Instead, we believe that we should provide services and support, whatever she needs for that mother and that child, prosecute the rapist, and uh, provide legal protection for both mother and child from forced visitations to the rapist in prison. And we're very consistent about this, about this issue. Um, we, we talk about not just rape in the, in the usual sense that people understand it, but also remember that statutory rape is rape. Mm -hmm. Drugging a victim is rape. Gang rapes are, 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 are rape. And trafficking, sex trafficking is also rape. Um, a form of rape. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a, there's a lot of violence within this culture. It's perpetrated on the Internet. It's perpetrated, unfortunately, by pornography mm -hmm. that makes it um, appear that women want something they don't. And I think that's why I appreciate EWTN and, and your show, especially being able to give Feminists for Life an opportunity to talk about something that is very mature and, um, and sensitive and unfortunately also affects minors. Mm -hmm. Sarah, on many college campuses, when this occasion comes around or when this subject comes up, there will be all kinds of discussions about uh, the ways college campuses can deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be a growing problem, indeed an epidemic on many college campuses. What would you say from your perspective about how to approach this issue in the most healthy way? Well, every school is required by law now to have a, a person who's in charge of violence against women as, long, as well as uh, pregnancy discrimination. 
And the schools are getting better and better all the time about um, reaching out to students, organizing events like Take Back the Night, and um, and also creating awareness through various events on campus. And a lot of times people talk about how to protect women, about going out in groups, um, and, and making sure that cups have lids. I know that sounds really silly, but it protects women from being drugged. Um, they also talk to women about common sense things about don't let yourself become, you know, too inebriated that you don't aren't making um, clear the decision that you would like to make if you want to, and also be very clear about the answer no. Um, so there's a great deal of awareness. This, uh, universities and campuses have been doing an increasingly better job about this, and also law enforcement has been taking this much more seriously. I still find it problematic that schools are put in the position of acting as um, judge and jury against men who are sometimes forced, falsely accused of rape mm-hmm. or sometimes don't have um, or aren't properly supporting the victim. And that could be a male victim as well as a female victim. Well- so, Sarah, one of the things that I have found troubling um, in the whole discussion about sexual assault awareness, at least from a Catholic perspective, is I keep trying to say everything should be consent-based. And the consent I'm thinking of for sex is within marriage. If once you say the I do, if you have not said the I do, you shouldn't be having sex. Seems like it would make it very clear, um, but it seems like now it's more about um, making sure you get uh, uh, consent. And I'm just concerned as a Catholic, you know, that it, there's no place now for self-mastery or for recognizing marriage as the proper place for sexual activity. I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I also want to remember that the early American feminists um, opposed marital rape. Mm-hmm. Um, there were huge, huge issues of alcoholism um, that complicated violence against uh, a woman and did not respect her. And that's when the early American feminists talked about voluntary motherhood, that, that men and women should be con- have uh, consent um, to having marital relations. So, um, And some women were unfortunately terribly abused back then. Mm-hmm. I think that within marriage, obviously, we want... Uh, we want better and healthy and warm and loving relationships as well. Um, and that just like in the Victorian days, that if somebody who was coming in inebriated and, um, and dealing with violence within that relationship, that rape is one of the forms of, of violence and not something that um, any religion would endorse. So oh, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's really, really complicated. But I think if you don't even get the the, the most obvious thing that that rape in any situation is um, is wrong, then you know that's that's the that's the outlier. You yeah, know? It's, it's then a, you go back to what you're talking about: wonderful relationships within a marriage. For those who are interested in what the catechism has to say, you can go to Catechism 2356, which talks about rape as a forcible violation of the sexual intimacy of another person, and it is a mortal sin. Um, But thank you so much, Saren Foster, for calling into Morning Glory and discussing this very sensitive topic. Saren is the founder and president of Feminist for Life, and if you would like to learn more about Feminist for Life, you can visit their website, feministforlife.org. Thank you so much. And thank you all. Take care. All right.